and welcome back to Your Regina 120, a list of videos of 120 things that I think that you should know. And today we're going to be talking about affirming the disjunct, which is yet another logical fallacy. Uh, how this is going to work, like other previous logical fallacies, is there's going to be a form of argument. Which starts with a, a statement of the form A or B, where A are two things, or A and B are two things that can be true. The second premise, the second part of the argument is A, or basically a statement that one of these two things is true. And the conclusion is that the second thing is not true. This is, of course, not valid. This is not what or means. There's, there's always the ability for A and B to both be true. So this is actually not a valid way of make or concluding that not B. So as kind of pointed out, this is because there's kind of a dual meaning in English and many other languages in the term or. When we say, you know, it, either one thing or another is true, usually we mean so in a uh, exclusive or sense, where if A is true, then B is not true, and vice versa. Uh, but when speaking a, in a precise way, you can either mean that or both of them, or, or, or inclusive or, where A and B, or A, just A, or just B can be true. That's a little bit confusing, but we can kind of look at it as a another Venn diagram. In this area we have A or B. So just A, just B, but there's this middle part here where both A and B are, are shared in, in a sense. So if, if A is true, then B is also true. So like previous lo er, logical fallacies, there's similar uh, argument forms that are very close to this uh, that are valid, and they're going to look very much like this. A or B for the first premise, not A for the second premise. And from that, you can conclude B. It is logical to conclude B if you have first decided that either A or B is true, and A is not true, then the only thing left to conclude is that B is true. Similarly, if you say that A or B is true, and B is not true, well, if A or B is true, B isn't, that leaves A is the thing that is true. So those are the two ways of making uh, a valid argument that's related to this one. But going back to the original, A or B, A, not B, of course is the original invalid form. Again, we're, we're, we're mostly talking in terms of this kind of abstract way of looking at it. So let, let's look at some examples of that I, I found just from a couple of minutes of Googling around. So you either support Mulcair or Trudeau in the upcoming federal election. If you support Trudeau, or if you support Mulcair, therefore you don't support Trude or Trudeau. Now, regardless of how you feel about Mulcair and Trudeau, this is, again, not valid. It is possible that you could view this as kind of a trick question, because in Canadian elections, you vote for your local member of parliament, and only as a sort of proxy of voting for the leaders of the parties that those local members of parliament represent. So you could support both Trudeau and Mulcair, and vote for someone completely different. It's not necessary, if you, if you support Mulcair, that you don't support Trudeau, and vice versa. It's not necessary that you do support Trudeau. It's not related. So logically, it's, uh, it's invalid to assume that if you support Mulcair or Trudeau, and you support Mulcair, that you don't 
support Trudeau. Of course, there may be reasons why you wouldn't support Trudeau, but they are not related to this particular argument. Let's look at another example. Either from the publishing industry, in the academic world, either you publish or perish. That's kind of the, the, the saying of the, the scientific world. If you publish, the, the argument is that you won't perish. Of course, this is nonsense. Everyone perishes. If you're mortal and if you're a man, you will eventually perish. So it's an, an, the, the argument is just not sound um, because you will perish anyway. Let's look at another one. Either you're a prof or you're a hobo from the site prof or hobo .com. Um, or if you Google that, you'll, you'll find it. It's quite amusing. If you're a prof, therefore you're not a hobo. Again, there's probably at least a couple of hobos in the world that are actually professors. And although it's sometimes hard to tell the two apart, uh, in this case, part of the reason may just be that there are in fact some hobos that are profs. And it is not valid to conclude that if you have one, you have not got the other. Same thing with pro poverty or prosperity. If you have prosperity, therefore no poverty. Again, in valid form, logically not necessary. It's entirely possible that a society with a lot of prosperous people will also have a lot of poverty in it. In Silicon Valley, there's a lot of people with millions and millions and millions of dollars and large houses and all the wealth, uh, or a lot of the wealth in the Western world. At the same time, there's a lot of people who have to go to soup kitchens, who work uh, from home, who may not have jobs and may not have houses. It's, it, there's a lot of poverty there. So there's, again, this discontinuity between the, this form and what it assumes to be the case and what is actually the case, right down to the logical level. And so hopefully these examples kind of give you a, a taste of how this particular logical fallacy looks in practice. It doesn't come up as much as per perhaps some of the other ones do, uh, especially once people have uh, thought about the situation a little bit. Uh, but again, it, it's something that does occasionally come up and something that you can watch for. Uh, if you're interested in seeing more examples or, or further discussion of this, feel free to ask uh, in any uh, comment thread where this video is posted. Uh, these videos are for your benefit of the internet. Uh, so, uh, do we have any questions from the audience? No questions from the audience? Okay. Well, hopefully I'll uh, see you in the uh, next video.